So Maloney has the mandate, both at home and in the EU Parliament. And there's been so much buzz over this European Union election in the past few days. I'm sure some of you have wondered, what exactly is the European Parliament? What does it do? Why does it hold elections? And why do the European parliamentary elections matter? And since we're focusing on Europe, let's address these issues one by one. First of all, what is the European Parliament? Now, Europe is made up of about 50 countries, the continent of Europe. 27 of these countries form a bloc called the European Union. Now, each of these countries has their own government, their own election, and their own way of functioning. But as part of the EU, they also have some, common, some things in common. They share some things in common, like a common market, a common currency, and the same rights. And to regulate and run all of this, the European Union has some common institutions. These are bodies that take decisions for the entire bloc. And which are these bodies? The European Commission, the European Council, and the European Parliament. They all work together, all three of them, to take decisions for the bloc. The European Parliament focuses on three Ds, debate, decision-making, and democratic rights. It works with the European Council and the European Commission to pass, amend, and reject legislation. And who sits in this European Parliament? There's a total of 720 members. They are elected as members of national parties. They contest as, as members of national parties in their, in their respective countries. But once they join the European Parliament, they're organized by political affiliation. Like there are leftists, centrists, and the right wing. Right now, there are seven such groups, plus some independent members in the European Parliament, which brings us to the second question. Who elects them? The people of EU countries, 450 million citizens cast votes to elect these members of the European Parliament. In fact, it is the only EU institution where members are elected. So essentially, it's like the voice of the people. The, this election is held every five years through a secret ballot. It is organized by the 27 member states. The number of seats for each country depends on its population. For example, Germany is the most populous EU state. It has more than 84 million people. So Germany gets the most number of seats in the European Parliament, and that is 96. Malta is the smallest country by population, so it gets six seats. Once elected, these MEPs, or members of European Parliament, look at all kinds of issues, from migration to climate change. Another big responsibility is the EU budget. The Parliament approves it. It also controls how the money is spent. But the EU Parliament is not all-powerful because it cannot propose its own law. That power lies with the European Commission, not with the Parliament. The Parliament can ask the Commission, it can pass or reject a law, it can also amend a law, but it cannot draft a law. Which brings us to this year's election. The so-called far-right or the Eurosceptics have made huge gains in this election in the European Parliament. Voters were worried about migration, security, and the future of the bloc, and they seem to have voted for these parties. They picked these parties, the Eurosceptics. Does that mean that these parties can now change the way the European Union functions? Well, not really. The European Parliament is important, but like I told you, it cannot function without the Commission or the Council. And those two bodies, the Commission and the Council, still remain in the hands of the centrists. So not very much will change immediately. For that to happen, the Eurosceptic parties must unite as a larger group. And that's often a challenge, because each party has different priorities, different ambitions, and a different voter base to cater to. Take Marine Le Pen's national rally in France. She once said that Germany's AFD was too toxic to be an ally. So the Eurosceptics also have divisions amongst themselves. And these elections may show growing support for the far right in Europe, the result can help these parties in their respective countries, but it may not significantly alter the trajectory of Europe in the short term. Fan of Italy's famous cuisine? Well, we are serving it with a side of diplomacy. As the G7 leaders gather in southern Italy, Vantage is taking you to the heart of the action. What's the agenda? Who is invited? And how is Italy preparing for it? Catch the special edition of Vantage throughout this week only on First Post. Fan of Italy's famous cuisine? Well, we are serving it with a side of diplomacy. As G7 leaders gather in southern Italy, Vantage is taking you to the heart of the action. What's the agenda? Who's invited? And how is Italy preparing for it? 
Catch the special edition of Vantage throughout this week only on First Post.